Good Thursday morning to you. This Belka Weather Hazards update is now the rest of today, Thursday, through next Wednesday, June the 29th. Quiet weather through Sunday. We'll see dry and cool conditions today, Thursday, and into the day on Friday to dry and warmer project weather conditions for Saturday and Sunday this weekend. The hottest day will occur on Sunday. This will be followed by more humidity working in with unsettled conditions and a thunderstorm threat that will last into Monday and Tuesday. Now, cool conditions will work back in toward the middle of next week with settled weather that will return on Wednesday. The tropics remain quiet. You're currently looking at uh, pollution emissions. This is uh, um, sulfur dioxide, SO2, and you can see uh, across North America how this, uh, some of the hot spots here that are emitting the greater LA ba Basin area. You can see around Houston, certainly the Northeast United States. Interestingly, though, there are uh, some spots in Canada emitting uh, uh, some of this uh, sulfur dioxide uh, up in the uh, tar sands region for sure. And then across Europe, but look at China. You can see China is the biggest emitter. This is looking at the northern hemisphere and the best quality uh, in terms of air quality, of course, in the Arctic. So kind of a familiar story here. We have a uh, trough of low pressure in the uh, eastern part of North America. This is causing a northwesterly flow of cooler air advecting into the region. Storming us off to the north, storming us off to the south, but a slot of dry weather, and we've seen this so many times now this June so far. This is convective available potential energy. This is uh, heat and humidity, uh, high octane air for thunderstorms, and indeed there's a few cells of thunderstorms rolling in across uh, parts of the upper Midwest into the mid-Atlantic. Taking a look at the heat indices, you can see that uh, the hottest weather, of course, uh, in the uh, southeastern United States. And the deserts haven't really uh, hit the, uh, the hot spots yet, but uh, we are seeing a trough of lower pressure that's working in across the deserts and is producing some pretty strong winds, some gusty winds in the mountains. And that's uh, blown some of the heat off uh, a little further off to the east now. Uh, the overall weather pattern will kind of stay like this with this... Uh, Trough of low pressure in the northeastern corner of North America and uh, a ridge of higher pressure that will eventually work on in. This is going to bring us some of the warmth and some of this heat is going to make it into our neck of the woods here along about Sunday. It looks like a cold front will move on through and then kind of stall out. and This will make for uh, an interruption in the heat with uh, more humidity added but kind of offset coming in late. And this means that uh, showers and thunderstorm threats will be with us on uh, Monday and Tuesday of next week. And this is the six hourly panel, so this is uh, valid this afternoon about 2 o'clock. And you can see that across Vermont uh, we have a little ridge of higher pressure kind of suppressing this uh, storm track to the south of us as well as one to the north of us. And some subtle changes will start to take place. This is valid about uh, Sunday morning. This would be about 8 o'clock Sunday morning. We start to see a uh, pretty sig significant weather system. That one from California will roll into the northeast uh, and into Canada and start to bring in, and it looks like some uh, reloading of moisture coming in out of the Gulf of Mexico. This is going to make for powerful thunderstorms across parts of the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. And as this transition takes place, some of this kind of breaks apart. Some leftovers, a secondary disturbance will start to work on in, and it's kind of a complicated scenario for both Monday and Tuesday of next week, but you can kind of see a double frontal structure there. And then eventually things clear on out and we get into some better weather conditions for the later part, uh, mid to late parts of uh, next week with uh, more dry air. And then uh, it's, it's almost like rinse and repeat here. Looking at the GFS Ensemble uh, modeling uh, centered on Burlington, Vermont, you can see dry weather all the way through the uh, end of the 27th. Uh, and this would be approximately, we're talking again, Monday and Tuesday of next week. So some really good project weather here and uh, a buildup in temperature. Weather Prediction Center, seven-day total accumulated precipitation. Uh, we're looking at uh, somewhere between a half inch and maybe up to uh, three-quarters of an inch in some spots of Vermont. This, of course, will occur after Sunday night. And in terms of temperature, the weighted temperature is running about 3 degrees above normal overall, just starting out relatively cool, and then uh, heating up with the hottest day coming in, of course, on Sunday, where some heat indices were indicated locally, oh, about uh, 85 to 90 degrees. Looking at three days later, we start to pick up on that. 
And this is uh, looking at the longer, mid to longer range here. This is our cool spell that's over the northeast United States. We see temperatures running just a little bit below normal, uh, about uh, as much as 5 degrees below normal uh, just to the north of us. And the way the trends are, uh, it looks like it's going to start to move on out of the region. And here comes that warm-up for uh, especially on Sunday. You can see how it develops and works in out of the upper Midwest. Kind of gets squeezed a little bit. That's followed by a little bit of a cool down that then uh, diminishes as we get closer in time. This would be valid on the 1st of July here. And then we start to warm back up uh, for the 4th of July. Looks like we uh, are center line there with uh, slightly warmer than normal conditions. Uh, that would be valid actually the uh, 3rd of July. And then from there, um, not anything significant with the cooler air to the north that occasionally drop in along with cold fronts that would suggest uh, potentially some severe weather now and then but not frequently and a little bit of a cool down here toward the 11th of July 14th 15th of July and so forth so once again seeing that we have about uh, four days of dry weather ahead good project weather concentrate on uh, some pollution emissions you can see here's the United States you can see just about every major city uh, Los Angeles area San Francisco uh, New York City New Jersey the interesting thing is north of the Great Lakes and why I'm not really familiar with these uh, this could be a fire potentially a doubtful but this is sulfur dioxide uh, just spin the planet a little bit here let's take a look at Europe um, some areas significant. There's London. You can see some of the major cities down across the southern parts of Africa. Potentially, maybe some fires there. Looking at Asia, people look. Take a look at China and India. Big pollution emitters, and China especially. I'm zoom in on that a little bit here. So you can see uh, a lot of pollution. Now, some of that goes across the Pacific Ocean into the west coast and also take a look at Hawaii that's partly volcanic sulfur dioxide and then you got Honolulu Oahu higher populations trade winds blow it off to the uh, west southwest but up in the temperate zone north of 45 north the winds are west to east and uh, some of that pollution comes off of China and Asia crosses the Pacific Ocean and ends up in California and Oregon and Washington some of that's locally home grown as well, parts of southern Canada. Pretty significant. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights.